birthday celebrating uh, Independence Day but also honoring Lou Gehrig and the pursuit of a cure for ALS 75 years ago Gehrig made his great speech and uh, one of the great fundraisers for the ALS Foundation in the upper Midwest Kent Herbeck joining uh, us here in the top of the fourth inning and this is a special uh, moment for you I know every time you hear that speech you can't <laughs> help but think about your dad can you? right um, yeah it's kind of a I was talking with guys on the field today but it, it, the more I hear it the more meaning his, his speech yeah. has it's pretty cool pretty touching deal before the game today. I got to be honest with you Herbie when I was listening to it I think of my pops because you know he passed away of Parkinson's which is kind of a form Very similar yep. ALS. Yep. I got a feeling as soon as they find out something with Parkinson's or ALS it's all going to be I hope hopefully so. we can uh, get something done there. One and know to Brendan Ryan your father passed away about the same time you were establishing yourself as a big leaguer and uh, right. be a bittersweet time in your life because you were called up and became a fixture for the twins. But the, about that same time your father's ALS diagnosis was made. Exactly. Um, yeah I was playing in Visalia California at the time in a ball and uh, he was diagnosed in May of 81 and uh, told me he had ALS and was like well, what the heck is that. Of course he started reading up on everything right away and and uh, you know ironically I get called up. In the end of August at Yankee Stadium playing Yankee Stadium where Lou Gehrig stood at first base for all those years which is uh, ironic again. And then you know, I'm just talking with people Dave St. Peter I think tweeted it today that Angelo Giuliani who was a twin scout right. who signed me right. was actually on the field during Lou Gehrig's speech for the Washington Senators. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, strikeout for Daduno right there picks up his first strikeout. Well, a special ceremonial first pitch today with uh, Kent Herbeck and Terry Steinbach, who also lost his lost father his to ALS. Yep. A couple of young men who lost their father to ALS, and the managers receiving the first ball tosses. Yeah, it's pretty cool that the Twins have, have uh, really jumped on and helped us out with with ALS and, and getting the word out, and you know, Major League Baseball now doing some stuff like this. For, uh, you're Last still involved years. in a lot of the, you know, you have the walleye tournament, and then you go right. on the, uh, the uh, snowmobile ride. Snowmobile we do. ride. We're raising, we raised three quarters of a million dollars riding a snowmobile yeah. <laughs> from northern Minnesota. It's pretty crazy. Terry Steinbach is the one that kind of got that right. started. Ron Garden hires participated Ron, Ron every year. Yep. Ron rides in it. Uh, Ron's wife. She rides in it. She's a crazy rider. She can ride like mad. Uh, Joe Vavra rides in it, and his wife Lisa. They, I mean, it's uh, it's a fun time. We haven't, and now we got Timmy Laudner riding in the right. last couple of years. So, but uh, those guys can go in the snowmobile. Believe me, I have a hard time, a hard time keeping up with them. Hey, why don't you work hard on Blylev and see if you can get him up here in the middle? Why don't of you January? have a golf tournament? No, down I mean, Florida you know what? You love it, Bert. You don't ever get cold. You got hand warmers and everything on all these machines. You have a blast. I might try it one year. Yeah. That would be nice. It is, it is really, it's beautiful. Really. Yeah, well, it's when really, do you do that? Is it like in you it's know, Super Bowl weekend? Usually. October when the sun's still out? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we do it while there's no snow. <laughs> Although they have done it when there's no snow. Tell you what, where do you end up? I'll just drive my car and meet you there. Yeah. No, we actually go from Duluth to Vermilion, Lake Vermilion. Vermilion over to. Uh, Two harbors and two harbors back down to Duluth. Yeah, so what's three the total ride? mileage? About 360 some oh, miles. On a snowmobile. On a snowmobile. Two and two to Brett Gardner. To Duno trying to put up a zero here on the fourth as he did in the third. That's grounded foul. Well, Ken, I mentioned, I mentioned before that you, you know, a tireless fundraiser for the ALS Foundation, hosted a golf tournament for many, many years. Um, fans who are watching have the opportunity to use their phones and they can actually text a donation uh, and we're going to put that number up here shortly with um, there it is yeah. there it is right there text give to 50555 another strikeout this time of Gardner and you can uh, text a donation of uh, 10 bucks uh, just by going on, on your phone and believe me every ten dollars helps too you know anything on oh. ten bucks it all adds up we got a kid up at our fishing tournament Bert his name is Michael Jackson um, I think he's afflicted with some cerebral palsy or something to get that but he he comes and helps out raise money and he and he brings a bag of pennies and says every this penny could be the penny that, that wow. does it. so it's a pretty cool deal 
two down and a ball driven to right field off the bat of Roberts chased by Arcia. And the ball wedged, wedged under the padding again and Roberts is rounding second on his way to third. Dozier's throw not in time. I think we had four years of baseball here and never saw a ball almost stuck under the padding in right field. That's twice on this homestand. Right right in the uh, series uh, before the Yankees came in against the Royals. There was a ball that did the same thing and Brian Roberts two doubles in the ball game. Now a triple. His fourth triple of the year. You expect that ball to hit that padding and come back and Arcia now has to go get it and Roberts still runs very well. Slides in safely. Kent, one other note about the, the ALS Foundation that you've been so involved with over the years. Uh, the, the funding goes in two different directions, as I understand it. Research, trying to find a cure, but also patient care right. for the people who are afflicted with this terrible disease. Yeah, a lot of respite care for, for the people that have it and you know, help the families out and what have you. They wheelchair stuff. We've started a thing that's called the Herbeck Singh. Um, Computers, right, a message board yeah, type thing. Right? right, that was my father's worst thing is he couldn't communicate, he couldn't talk. So we got came up with this deal. It was a check swing back to the mound and uh, his foot. Not a piece and, of yeah, and um, so they got a computer system that helps the people talk. Oh, that is awesome. So, um, you know, stuff goes that way. Just different stuff in the you know for in the bathroom for taking showers or helping them out in the bathroom or whatever. I know carriers also. A big back yeah, there. Mike Metzger over at Carrier, yeah. Minnesota Air. They, they're huge uh, supporters. This could be interesting here. Ron Gardner is going to come out and ask Joe West why the play was called dead. Uh, dead ball was called when Gardner doesn't think the ball hit Ellsbury. Ellsbury's foot. Gardy's not too happy. With, no, he's not too happy with Mr. West. I don't think. Well, take a look right here. You got to watch the direction of the ball. Okay. And it hit off yeah, that it looks like it hit him. Yeah. Bottom of his foot. Yep. Uh, because where the ball came back to the mound, usually a swing like that, he'd roll over and hit it. <laughs> you first. see Gardy, Gardy's giggling there. I, mean. <laughs> I think he just wanted to go out and yell at Joe. <laughs> go stand on his dirt. <laughs> yeah. Two strikes. Strike him out. Good inning for Deduno. He strands Roberts at third, another scoreless inning. Thanks, Congratulations guys. on all the great work all you've right. been doing, man. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Bert. Thanks, guys. Stay tuned for the 